We are glad to have you back on the God's Light channel. Before we begin, I want to welcome you to our channel. For those who are new here, our mission is to share genuine Christian testimonies from around the world, spreading the powerful message of God's kingdom. We focus on stories about Jesus, the afterlife, heaven and hell, and other Bible-related topics, bringing them to you in engaging story form twice or three times a week. We invite you to become a member of this family by subscribing to our channel. God bless you as you do so. Today's experience was sent to us by a brother named James. In his experience, he was shown diverse segment of hell with many who claimed to be Christian, but missed it on account of different acts they engage in, watch to the end, to fully grasp the full understanding of his experience begin reading as sent to us. Hello, my name is James, and this is my testimony about my journey to the other side, a journey that changed everything I thought I knew. I was just a regular guy, a 40-year-old man living my life thinking I was doing enough to make it to heaven, but I was wrong and I found out the hard way. It all started on a seemingly normal day. I woke up, had breakfast with my wife and kids, and went to work. Nothing felt different or special about that day. I worked at a construction company and my job was physically demanding but fulfilling. I always thought I was a good person, helpful to my neighbors, a loving husband, and a caring father, but little did I know that all that wasn't enough. That evening, as I was driving home from work, I started feeling strange. My chest tightened and I struggled to breathe. I pulled over to the side of the road, hoping it would pass, but it didn't. I felt a sharp pain shooting through my chest and down my left arm. I knew something was terribly wrong. In those terrifying moments, my life flashed before my eyes. I thought about my family and how much I loved them. I thought about the things I had done and the things I hadn't. Regret and fear washed over me. I whispered a desperate prayer, asking God to help me. When I opened my eyes, I was no longer in my car. I was in a place that felt cold and dark, a place I couldn't recognize. I was confused and scared. My heart pounded in my chest and my mind raced. I called out, but my voice echoed back to me, unanswered. I felt alone in a way I had never felt before. As I stood there trying to make sense of my surroundings, I saw a figure approaching me. It was a man, and his presence was both calming and intimidating. He introduced himself as my guide. He told me that I had died and that my journey was just beginning. Couldn't believe it. I wasn't ready to die. I had so much to live for, so much I still wanted to do. My guide told me that I was in a place called Hades, a holding place for souls. He said that I needed to see something important. Something that would change my perspective on life and eternity. I was hesitant, but I knew I had no choice but to follow him. He spoke to me at different points, and the things he told me are still fresh in my heart till date. As we walked, the darkness around us grew thicker. I felt a chill in the air, and an overwhelming sense of dread settled over me. My guide led me to a massive gate. It was dark and foreboding, and I could hear the faint sounds of wailing and cries for mercy coming from the other side. This is hell, my guide said, his voice solemn. You need to see what happens here to understand why so many do not make it to heaven. My heart sank. I had always believed in hell but I never thought I would see it. I never thought it was a place I could end up. The gates opened and we stepped inside, inside hell. The sights and sounds were beyond anything I could have imagined. Souls were tormented by flames and demons, their cries echoing through the fiery landscape. It was a place of unimaginable pain and suffering. I saw people from all walks of life people who looked just like you and me. 
my guide explained that these were souls who had lived their lives without truly following God's path. They had claimed to be Christians, but their hearts were far from Him. They had not truly repented, and their actions had not aligned with their professed faith. They had lived for themselves rather than for God. He pointed to a soul and told me little about the soul. He let me knew the soul had been a respected leader in his church. He had preached about love and kindness, but had secretly harbored hatred and bitterness in his heart. Same with another soul, but this time around a woman, not a man. She had been known for her charity work, but she had done it all for recognition and praise, not out of genuine love for others. Their outward appearances had masked the true state of their hearts. As we moved through hell, I was shown more and more people who had called themselves Christians, but had not lived according to God's will. My guide showed me the consequences of living a double life, professing faith on the outside while harboring sin and deceit on the inside. These people had fooled others and even themselves, but they could not fool God. I also shown a young man who had attended church every Sunday, but had spent his weekdays indulging in sinful pleasures. He thought that simply attending church was enough to save him. I saw a businesswoman who had donated large sums of money to her church, but had gained her wealth through dishonest means. She believed her donations would secure her place in heaven, but her heart remained corrupt. My guide's words pierced my soul. James, many people believe that outward appearances and occasional good deeds are enough to earn their way to heaven. But God sees the heart. He knows the truth behind every action. A true Christian lives their faith every day, not just when it's convenient. Next, my guide took me to a part of hell where the souls of the unforgiving were tormented. These were people who had held on to grudges and refused to forgive those who had wronged them. Their hearts had been hardened by bitterness and anger. I saw a woman who had never forgiven her father for abandoning her family. Her anger had consumed her, and she had lived her life in a constant state of resentment. I saw a man who had been betrayed by a friend and had spent years plotting revenge. Their unforgiving hearts had kept them from experiencing God's grace and mercy. My guide spoke softly, James. Forgiveness is a cornerstone of the Christian faith. Jesus taught us to forgive others as we have been forgiven. Holding on to anger and bitterness only separates us from God. To truly follow Christ, we must let go of our grudges and extend grace to others. He also leave a statement of profound knowledge and enlightenment at every point. We then moved to an area where the souls of the lukewarm were suffering. These were people who had been indifferent in their faith, neither fully committed to God nor completely rejecting Him. They had lived their lives in a state of spiritual apathy, never fully embracing the love and teachings of Jesus. I was shown a man who had always claimed to be too busy to pray or read the Bible. He had prioritized his career and personal ambitions over his relationship with God. I also saw a woman who had attended church sporadically, never fully engaging with the community or seeking a deeper understanding of her faith. My guides made the statement at this point, James God desires a passionate and committed relationship with each of his children. Being lukewarm in our faith is not enough. We must seek Him wholeheartedly with all our hearts, minds, and souls. We continued again our journey, and I saw the souls of the hypocrites. These were people who had preached one thing but lived another. They had judged others harshly while ignoring their own sins. They had used their faith as a facade, a mask to hide their true selves. I saw a pastor who had condemned others for their sins but had secretly struggled with his own vices. I saw a churchgoer who had gossiped and slandered others while pretending to be righteous. 
Their hypocrisy had not gone unnoticed by God, and now they faced the consequences. My guide looked at me with intensity and said this, James, God calls us to live authentic lives, to be genuine in our faith and actions. Hypocrisy not only harms our relationship with God, but also damages the witness of the church. We must strive to live with integrity, aligning our actions with our words. Next, we came to the souls of the self-righteous. These were people who had believed they were better than others because of their good deeds and religious practices. They had looked down on others, forgetting that salvation is a gift from God, not something earned by our own efforts. I saw a man who had prided himself on his knowledge of the Bible, but had used it to judge and belittle others. I saw a woman who had fasted and prayed regularly, but had done so with a sense of superiority. Their self-righteousness had blinded them to their own need for God's grace. My guide's words were clear, James. Humility is essential in our walk with God. We must recognize that we are all sinners in need of His mercy. True righteousness comes from a heart that is humble and dependent on God, not from our own accomplishments. We then visited the souls of the idol. These were people who had known what was right but had failed to act. They had been given talents and opportunities but had chosen to do nothing with them. Their inaction had led to their downfall. I saw a man who had been blessed with great intelligence, but had used it for selfish pursuits. I saw a woman who had been given the gift of compassion, but had never reached out to help those in need. Their potential had been wasted, and now they faced the consequences. My guide's voice was firm. James, God calls us to be active in our faith, to use the gifts and talents he has given us for his glory. We must not be idle or complacent. We are called to be his hands and feet in this world, to make a difference and to spread his love. As we move forward, I saw the souls of the deceived. These were people who had followed false teachings and had been led astray. They had put their trust in charismatic leaders and popular ideologies instead of seeking the truth in God's word. I saw a man who had been a devout follower of a false prophet, believing in lies and false promises. I saw a woman who had embraced a distorted version of the gospel that emphasized wealth and success over sacrifice and service. Their misplaced trust had led them away from the true path. My guide's eyes were filled with concern. James, it is vital to discern the truth and to seek wisdom from God's word. We must be vigilant and not be swayed by false teachings. Our foundation must be built on the truth of the gospel, not on the shifting sands of human opinions. We then came to the souls of those who had loved the world more than God. These were people who had been consumed by materialism, pleasure, and worldly desires. They had placed their trust in wealth, status, and temporary pleasures neglecting their spiritual lives. I saw a man who had spent his life chasing after money, never satisfied with what he had. I saw a woman who had pursued fame and recognition, always seeking approval from others. Their love for the world had led them away from God's love and eternal truth. My guide's voice was gentle but firm, James. We are called to be in the world, but not of the world. Amen. Our true treasure is in heaven, not in earthly possessions. We must guard our hearts against the temptations of this world and seek first the kingdom of God. We move to a place where the souls of the ignorant were suffering. These were people who had never taken the time to seek God or understand his ways. They had lived their lives in spiritual blindness, never opening their hearts to the truth. I saw a man who had always been too busy to consider matters of faith. He had dismissed the idea of God as irrelevant. I saw a woman who had been raised without any religious instruction and had never sought to learn more. Their ignorance had cost them dearly. My guide's words were clear. 
James, God has revealed himself through his creation, his word, and his son, Jesus Christ. We must seek him and strive to understand his ways. Ignorance is not an excuse. We are all called to know God and to live according to his truth. Next, we visited the souls of the prideful. These were people who had lived their lives with arrogance and self-importance. They had refused to submit to God's authority, believing that they knew better and could live independently of him. I saw a man who had always insisted on doing things his way, never considering God's will. I saw a woman who had prided herself on her accomplishments, believing she had achieved everything on her own. Their pride had separated them from God's grace. My guide's voice was stern. James, pride is a deadly sin. It blinds us to our need for God and leads us to rely on ourselves instead of Him. We must humble ourselves before God, recognizing that everything we have comes from Him. True greatness is found in serving others and submitting to God's will. As we continued, I saw the souls of the unrepentant. These were people who had refused to acknowledge their sins and had never sought God's forgiveness. They had lived their lives in rebellion, rejecting God's offer of mercy and grace. I saw a man who had always justified his wrongdoings, never admitting his need for repentance. I saw a woman who had lived a life of indulgence, never considering the consequences of her actions. Their refusal to repent had sealed their fate. My guide's voice was filled with sorrow. James, repentance is essential for salvation. We must recognize our sins, confess them, and turn away from them. God is always ready to forgive, but we must come to him with a contrite heart. Without repentance, there can be no reconciliation with God. Finally, my guide took me to a place where the souls of the faithful were at peace. These were people who had lived their lives in accordance with God's will, trusting in His promises and following His commandments. They had faced trials and temptations, but had remained steadfast in their faith. I saw a man who had endured persecution for his beliefs but had never wavered in his commitment to Christ. I saw a woman who had faced great hardships, but had always trusted in God's provision and guidance. Their faith had sustained them, and now they were at rest. My guide's voice was filled with hope. James' faith is the key to our relationship with God. It is through faith that we receive His grace and are empowered to live according to His will. True faith is not just believing in God, but trusting Him. With our whole lives, no matter the circumstances, after witnessing all these things, my guide led me back to the place where we had started. He looked at me with compassion and said, James, you have been given a second chance. Your journey is not over. Return to your life with a renewed purpose and share what you have seen with others. Live your life in accordance with God's will and help others do the same. Suddenly, I felt a jolt and I opened my eyes to find myself in a hospital bed. I had been given another chance, a chance to live my life differently. I knew I had to share my story, to warn others, and to encourage them to seek God with all their hearts. Dear listeners, my journey to the other side showed me the reality of eternity and the importance of living a life that is truly pleasing to God. Many people believe that simply professing faith or performing good deeds is enough to secure a place in heaven. But God looks at the heart. He desires a genuine relationship with each of us, one that is marked by humility and love. Repentance and a commitment to His will as you listen to my experience. I urge you to examine your own lives. Are you living in a way that reflects true faith and obedience to God? Are you holding on to grudges or living in hypocrisy? Are you seeking first the kingdom of God, or are you consumed by the things of this world? Remember, it's never too late to turn to God and seek His forgiveness. He is always ready to welcome you with open arms.
Live each day with the knowledge that eternity awaits and let that knowledge guide your actions and decisions. May this testimony inspire you to live a life that is pleasing to God, to seek Him with all your heart, and to help others do the same. Together we can make a difference and ensure that we are ready for the day when we will meet our Creator face to face. Thank you for watching to the end. Kindly like and share this video. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe to continue get updated whenever we upload new experiences sent to us. Thank you. Until next time, remain blessed.